In this video, I want to clarify a little bit how to parse a number and actually validate if uh, that number was correctly parsed, right? So what we, go what we got is a valid number, not just some garbage value. So as I said in a previous video, the best functions to use is the str2 something, the data type that you want to use, family of functions. So I'm going to use the str2l, that's a long int, and I'm going to use that to parse this str variable or array here that has the string with the value 133, right? And here I'm going to pass in first the string. The second argument I can pass it as null because we don't really need it right now. And then the third is the base, as you might remember, and that's I'm going to just set it to 10. Okay, and we can take in this result and say long int x equals this. And let's also print it on the screen. So I'm going to say print f percent, uh, we can say percent ld, I think, that's also valid, and x in here. If I try to run this, I'm going to get 133 printed on the screen through this x variable. So this x variable if I also debug into it, I'm gonna get uh, here x to be 133. So that we know it works, okay? But what if, what if, for example, we have here uh, a different value? So if I stop this, if I have, for example, just a some just some words, let's say I have Google.com for some reason inside this string, and try to parse it uh, to an to an integer. What happens if I do that? If I run it. Well, you notice the code executed, nothing actually broke, it's still working, but x has the value 0. Now, the question is, how can we uh, know that this value 0 is not just a wrongly parsed string? Because this str2l function returns 0, even uh, if the parsed string wasn't able to be parsed, or if the actual parsed value was zero. So how can we basically differentiate between a wrongly parsed uh, number, right, like this string, or just zero here, right? So if you run this again, you'll notice that we're gonna get the exactly, exactly the same results. We're gonna get x equal to zero. So how can we differentiate between those two cases? You might remember about the end pointer that we have passed as a second parameter here. I just set it to no, but what we can do, this guy, if you take a look at the signature of the function, you can see there the second parameter is a double pointer to char. That's basically, so our str is uh, downgraded to, a, to just a pointer to char, right? We pass in a, a double pointer to char as a second parameter, that's basically saying, okay, set uh, the address where you stopped parsing the number to that variable that it's pointing at. So we can store here an end pointer, just end pointer, and we can pass in the address of this end pointer, right? And uh, what, the, what this does is basically we're passing here a double pointer to a char. And after this is executed, this guy is gonna actually point to after this uh, parsed number inside the string, right? So we've seen this before, right? We've seen if I if I have, for example, 133, and uh, if I try to run it, you'll notice that if I tell it here to print also str and to also print and ptr, you'll notice that the addresses are just three apart, right? This one is zero, this one is three, the rest is the same. Uh, so basically we have skipped over the first three characters of the string. And if we have something after it, if I try to, yes, I do want to stop the debugging. If I have something after it, so just some random string, you'll notice that this NPTR is like right after the last digit. So we know that already. Now, what we can do is test this guy. So what if we have that google.com string here? What's going to happen with str and NPTR? If I run it, you'll notice that, well, these two are going to be exactly the same, right? So because they are exactly the same, uh, that means that the string didn't get parsed because you know, the end PTR here is set to wherever it stopped parsing. So uh, here's the beginning of the string and after it, there should be a number. If there's a number, then uh, set end PTR to be after this number, right? And actually return the number in here. Otherwise, well, just stand still and return the same address. Okay, so since those two are the same, because after it, there was like no 
number to parse, that means that we didn't parse anything. That means that this x here that was equal to zero is not an actual parsed number, it's just we, we got some uh, uh, unparsable data and we should actually treat this error. So what we can say here is, if I stop this, if str is the same as the NPTR, then, so you can say here print f, and we can say number could not be parsed, or something like that. And uh, of course return, let's return zero as well. Here. So if I try to run this, you'll notice I'm gonna get on the screen number could not be parsed because this end pointer didn't actually change. So this is one of the issues solved. Now, what if this number, like we had here 133, that's fine. We can parse that. We're gonna get 133 on the screen. If we give it zero, now it actually works and it doesn't say uh, the number could not be parsed because str and nptr are actually different. But the issue is what if uh, the number is too large to store in our container. So what if we have a really big number, like let's just give it a lot of digits. What happens then? Well, if I try to run it, you'll notice we're actually printing here a uh, max int, right? Max long int to be specific, but it is definitely not this number that we have parsed. And we didn't print anything on the screen. This guy actually got changed this time, right? So we did parse a number, but it was too big. And the specification, what it says is if the number is too large, it just sets, it just returns the maximum number that can fit in that container. In our case, it was just ma max int or max long int. In, on my machine, that, those are the same. And uh, it also sets a certain variable somewhere that tells us that uh, there was an, uh, a range problem. The number was too big to be parsed and to be stored in this number. So. To fix this, what we have to do is just say include erno.h and this is the variable that we're gonna actually use called erno. And say here if this erno macro is actually equal to e range, then we can just print f uh, that number is too big to store in the variable, let's see. And also return zero here. Now if I try to run it, you'll notice that it says number is too big to store in the variable. So basically this guy was too large and it couldn't be stored in a long, long int. For example, what we can do is let's, let's trim it down a little, let's say this much, I don't know how many millions this is, this is true, probably something like 1 billion. If I run it, it's still uh, much bigger than expected. But if I change the type, for example, to a long long, so I'm gonna change this to a long long and also parse it as a long long here and um, I have to change it here as well so that it, it's printed as a long long uh, decimal. If I run it now, you'll notice that the container is has enough space to actually fit all that in, right? And uh, which was not the case with just a long int. And that's really all there is to this. You just have to check if the NPTR actually changed. So if the NPTR is different than this STR, then definitely uh, something was parsed. But even if that's actually true, the air no might have changed. So if this guy actually changed to E range, this is the only value that it actually sets it to. If this guy is E range, then uh, the number was too big to parse or too small as well. So if I have here a negative number and a really, really, really uh, small number, basically, it's gonna say that number is too big. Number is too big in terms of uh, the number of bits it needs to be stored in, not that in terms of its actual value. So I hope that now you know how to actually parse a number and validate that the parsing was correct. I know that I made a couple of videos uh, be before about this topic, but I didn't go in depth as to actually uh, tell you how to properly validate if the number was uh, parsed or not. I hope this clarifies that 
and uh, I hope you got something out of it. Thank you so much for watching and well, take care. See you next time.